Have you ever wondered what cooks better? A drum? A stick burner? Well, on today's video, we're gonna find out. Yeah, that's right. We're testing two of our favorite cookers with prime rib, and you're gonna wanna stick around for this. So it's that time of year when you get that itch to cook something just a little bit different, and guess what pops into mind? That's right, we're talking prime freaking rib. Now you need to listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. So I've messed up more times than you could ever count. So before you go sacrificing your meat to the fire god, you might wanna listen up for this one because we're gonna show you how to nail it every single time. After all, it is the holidays, and before you go swinging your meat out on the table, you need to do it with zero hesitation. So prime rib is that cut of meat that's just super hard to nail. On one hand, you gotta have perfect bark, but you can't overcook it because we all know what happens when you overcook it. It's trash. So to get started, we fired up both pits and let them roll and headed on up to the lab to get the meat ready. Okay, for this one, we ran out to our local butcher and picked up a nice prime rib with a very light trim on it. And we had to cut that sucker in half because, hey, what other way are we gonna test these? So the prime rib ended up weighing about eight pounds a piece. And my goal was to treat them exactly the same to see the difference in these two methods. So one of the keys to cooking these well is a nice tying method. This is purely to prevent the roast from changing shapes as it cooks. So I've explained this knot technique a lot, and I think I just end up confusing people. So, hey, with these, I'm just gonna tie three individual ones. So once you get these things nice and snug, it's time to season them. And I'm gonna hit them with just a light coat of my boy Travis Clark's mustard and some SPG, and don't be afraid to cake it on here. And later on, I'm gonna add some Texas beefs just so I can really kick up this crust. So once these guys are seasoned, I'm just gonna let them hold tight while I go check on my cookers. All right, so we're gonna be running both these pits at 300 degrees just to keep things consistent. And I'm gonna kiss them with a little bit of nice pecan wood for that smoke. Now, I love the flavor of pecan. It's neutral, it's not too heavy, and it's easy to cook with. But hey, you use whatever you want. All right, so we're gonna start both these prime ribs off at the exact same time, just so we can compare how quickly they come up to temp. All right, so I'm shooting for 127 degrees internal timpanese, and I'm gonna be checking them with my thermoworks. So about 30 to 45 minutes in, once your bark starts setting up, it's time to start basting. Now I'm really excited to try this. This is the Gordon Ramsay technique, but kicked in with a little bit of Cosmo. All right, for this special basting sauce, we use three sticks of butter, Kerrygold, that's what we use, some fresh garlic cloves, fresh rosemary, thyme, a splash of olive oil, and last but not least, the secret ingredient, a little bit of brisket mop to tie all these flavors together. So next, I took the rest of all these fresh herbs and got a little redneck basting brush put together with a chopstick. And uh, I would've used a rubber band if I could've found it, but I had to use my butcher twine. Now it's time to get ready to start blasting these suckers with the special Cosmo sauce. Okay, so we ain't gonna stop here now. We gotta make a little bit of dipping sauce. And the mixture we're gonna be using today is gonna add tons of flavor and really pop well with this bar. So this recipe consists of about a quarter cup of sour cream, two tablespoons of prepared horseradish, I like the extra hot, a tablespoon of mustard, Travis Clark's, a little bit of olive oil, and a little Texas beef, a handful of parsley chopped, mix it all up, Store it in the fridge until your prime ribs are done. So the can was the first prime rib to get done. It took about three and a half hours. Once it hits 127, I yanked that sucker off. Now after a couple more logs on the stick burner, the prime rib come off looking stupid good. Now we wrap both of these in half pans and let them set for at least 20 minutes before getting into them. So as you can already see, these two look different. So I cut in the stick burner one first, and let me tell you, this well exceeds my expectations. The flavor, the bark, 
were just over the freaking top, and the tenderness is everything you expect from a cooker just like this. Now, as far as the drum prime rib, as you can already tell, it doesn't have the same crust. But, you know, just to be fair, it's a completely different cooker altogether. We could have probably got a way better crust if we'd have flipped this thing about halfway through the cook. When I cut into this one, the texture was kind of the same, but a little bit different. I guess it's only something you can explain by the feel of the knife. But the first bite off this can was outstanding. The signature can flavor was there, but the bark just wasn't the way I wanted. As you can see, both these prime ribs came out super awesome. And I would be confident in serving either one of these. But if I had to pick a winner, hey, I'm giving it up to the stick burn. The smoke flavor, the bark, just everything about it turned out better. So it's no surprise why the El Rey won. But hey, man, don't discount the drum cooker because it can bang one out too. But hey, man, you know me, use what you got. I just happen to have a stick burner and a can. If you got a pellet cooker, electric cooker, it doesn't matter, you just do you. So hey, I wanna thank you for watching. And if you love this video, you're gonna wanna go check out the video right below me on how to cook a ribeye. Click on it and I'll see you over.